Hey, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of doing a across the globe Skype interview with the extraordinarily talent, talented multi instrumentalist Richard Bona, who is coming to us hey. direct from Paris. And oui, 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 oui. Oui, oui. So, for those of you that have been following and you know reading our magazine, you might recall we had Richard on our cover in our October November two thousand nine issue. Uh, we had an interview with my former uh, editor uh, Jake Cott, and there was a lot of details about Richard's beginning. Originally, you're from Cameroon. That's right. And uh, you started on Balafon playing and there's been a lot of instruments in between guitar and and all of that and uh, the one thing I recall from this interview that struck me the greatest is that you have been a very strong ear musician because that is in the roots of music before they were writing formally this is how music was transferred and it is part of the storytelling that is music and it was passed from person to person um, so with that um, as you continue to go you know you you've got this uh, amazing ear and a brain that works where you can both sing and play at the same time which to me is is just extraordinary because I have trouble doing more than one thing at once and my wife can attest to this because <laughs> I, I get focused on one thing and she has to say my name two or three times. So I, I get I'm very easily distracted there. But the key thing is that as I've looked at and we've, we've done some review on some of your music and I've listened to you sing and perform with a numerous amount of amazing world players, to me you are a bassist of what I would describe a higher level. You grab music. You understand music. And in a way that goes beyond just just playing, it is you know you see the patterns in it, you see the color in the music, and you see how it is a web that links the entire world all together. And so you have embraced so much music from all over the world with your music. Now this is all coming together right now with a new CD release. I know we had kind of the digital release in the summer of. Heritage. Uh, talk to us about this this project, Richard. This is very exciting. This is, you know, just like you described, you know, I, uh, I just happened, to, I grew up with musicians around me, you know. My grandfather being a musician, my mother a musician, has some grand uncles that were musicians too, so I was just, I, I just grew up in that environment that kind of helped me just grow and uh, uh, it's funny how you, you mentioned playing and singing. It's actually not difficult to me because I just grew up doing that. You know, so the only thing I knew was playing and singing at the same time because I just grew up doing it. When I played when I played balafon back then, I just learned to play balafon and sing at the same time. Yes. You know, and uh, when I moved, playing organ was the same thing. Playing guitar, so I just kept carrying, you know, the same meter basically you know that I used back then you know and when I when I came to the base you know I, I just I just kept on doing the same thing so uh, it wasn't something that came as being like something new and so growing up with this uh, with these folks I just uh, with my folks you know as you know we we, we, we don't have any form of school or any kind of uh, uh, you know academical, way of teaching music we just play music you know we just feel it sense it and uh give it to the people the way we receive it absolutely you know and uh and and uh, and our culture is more based into that you know into you know passing just by talking sometimes or showing things so i grew up playing a minor chord i couldn't tell you if what was a minor chord, major seven? I didn't know, it, but I could play the chord. I could hear it. So music comes to me as a, a, a as a frame, you know. Like I would say, oh, a square. When I heard a chord, I'm like, that's a square chord, for example. When I heard some, oh, that's a triangle, you know, mm -hmm. or, or like colors. So I knew right when I hear chord. When I heard chords back then, 
without me knowing the, the name of, of the chord, I knew the shape of it. Yes. Yeah. So that's how music came to me, uh, you know, to my ears. And uh, of course, using also my, my sensibility, uh, uh, how, how I want to process this chord or how I want to process uh, against the melody and the rhythm part, because rhythm part was the biggest one, because uh, uh, I grew up with amazing, an amazing percussion player, which is my grandfather, who happened to be my grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he, that's my mentor right there. So, you know, I played percussion with him for many years. So, and and that helped me a lot too, you know, because uh, through my development, you know, and my uh, guitar playing, you will hear part of it. It's all rhythmic. I would say 85% of the time, you hear solid background when it comes to rhythm. And uh, and talking about a project, you know, I always, you know, to my whole, to my whole, uh, uh, what I, I hate to call it a career, to my whole journey, yes. you know, I would call it. And uh, I just, I just happened to learn that, you know, people that will teach you also the most in life are people that are different than you. And uh, I happen to meet so many people from different uh, uh, background and culture of mine, from a different, they came from, you know, I had a chance to go with Indian musicians, American musicians, Europeans, uh, and they all, they all helped me into shaping my own play, my own game. And so, because you, and embracing the difference, and I would say embracing the difference is, uh, it's a way of embracing the tolerance. It's a, it's a way of embracing others too, and knowing others better. Because once you know others better, others better, top top. You you up there because uh, you know what's going on now, and you get to understand life and appreciate life in a different way. And uh, so that's why you know uh, I'm a real student of music. I'm a real a real real student of music. Because uh, I learn one thing, the more I know, less I know. And, uh, you know, the more I keep going, you know, and I love that. I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like Lamb Sand Armstrong, but without a dope. <laughs> Don't tell him. I love I'm like, so, so climbing, <laughs> climbing and climbing. And, uh, but I never want to reach the top because that's not my goal. You know, because once you reach the top in life or in your mind, when you reach the top, the only place left to go is down. I never want to have, I don't want to have that feeling uh, 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 into music. And, um, and music doesn't have, you shouldn't have that kind of feeling in music because music is wide. Music is big. And uh, and the music is always, somebody said, who said, I know that I don't know. You know, I love that. I love that expression because uh, that's how I feel with music. You know, the more I know, the I'm just less I know. You know, and uh, with the Mandy Can, so it's an old project. You know that, you know, an old idea, no, an old thing that I had, I had in mind. To this record, I'm trying to show actually to the people, because when you mention Afro Cuban. People link that directly to African island, but it's more it's more wider than that. That music is five centuries old. This music is a combination of Spanish people that came to the island, uh, mm. native people. We never hear about them, but before the Spanish got into that island, there, there were people there. living there. Yes. And music is one of the old, most old form of uh, expression. So people were playing music back then before the Spanish got to the island. And then comes the African slaves. And then comes the Chinese slaves that you don't hear about either. <laughs> so that's what I call real Afro-Cuban. I wanted to show to this album how diverse and how sophisticated this music is. And uh, through it, people think, oh, you need to read a non-history book. I learned one thing, too. 
I want to see people playing music and I can tell you their story. Mm -hmm. I want to see how people cook and I can tell you their story. Because those are the things people never change. Exactly. Well, it's... And, uh, when you look at the... I'm sorry. When you look at the orchestration, mm -hmm. you see trumpet, trombone, stay in piano. You know, that's the... That's the contribution. I call it contribution from Europe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you look at congas, bata, uh, 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 bongo, you know, just the names relate you to all the hand drums takes you back to Africa immediately. Absolutely. You see the maraca. It's not African. It's not European. Who plays the maracas? Indians. <laughs> Absolutely. So all these little things shows you even despite the moment, despite how the African got into Ireland, we know how the, the, the trade slaves and all this thing, you know, but people were still were able to leave us something called a heritage that I call today a world heritage, mm -hmm. you know, that today Cuba must be proud of. Uh, 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 that we travel, we just did 43 concerts around the world playing that project. We went to Asia, we went to wow. Europe, we went to Russia, we, and people enjoy it everywhere because it's a world heritage, you know. And uh, and I love to go to Cuba one day and uh, and also present this project and tell them and uh, and and maybe make them even discover, rediscover too that this music actually is way more wider than the even thing sometimes because you know people ask maybe on the island they tend to forget how uh, uh, this music influenced the world and uh, and how this music is entirely part of the world you know because uh, and, uh, and you could and, and so to this instrument like I said you know that shows you how right away how we got linked with all the states. And even despite that bad, the moment that, how the, this whole thing got shaped up, uh, even African that came with nothing, they came the way they came with nothing, they came as slaves, they were able to contribute with their voices, mm -hmm. with their dances, with their way of cooking, mm -hmm. with their religions, with their way of thinking. It's a beautiful heritage, you know, to the world that look at look at where we live now and to show that we all one at the end of the day. This music is a proof that we are all one, you know, at the end of the day. And even if the politics tend to divide us, you know, music will come and right away show us all the time that listen, this is where we stand mm -hmm. together. And uh, that's my purpose in music today, in trying to let people know that our life, our life should have the same reflection music has. Absolutely. Well, this yeah. comes at a very interesting political time when you mention it, because relationships with Cuba are opening up. Um, I had the good fortune in, in my life experience, I lived in Puerto Rico for 18 years. Oh. So I'm very familiar with the elements that you are mentioning, the African element. The Chinese workers built the roads on the island of Puerto Rico. The food, where we eat mofongo, where we eat uh, all the yuca and the roots. Mofongo and tostones. Yes, tostones, you know. So it's I, I have the passion for both things, the music and the food. I have to be careful with the food because one can get very large, no? But too bad for me. Yeah. Mofongo, we cook mofongo the same way like you do in Puerto Rico. It's called mtuba. There you go. There you go. Same thing. <laughs> So fab fabulous and 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 so much labor and so and and there's good mofongo and there's not so good mofongo. So it's 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 an amazing uh, parallelism. Now with that, also the rhythms and the syncopation and the elements of the music that as I've been listening and 
I know that you use the term, uh, you know, Afro-Cuban. I've tended uh, to use it more Afro-Antillian in general because I've heard these same elements not only from Cuba, in Puerto Rico, from the northern coast of Venezuela to Mexico. And I did a review on a CD a few years back from a Mexican group, and I'm listening, I'm going, this is Afro-Antillian. This is not traditional Mexican music, and it had all of the elements that you've mentioned. Listen, I went to Ecuador, just to tell you. Mm -hmm. And I'm a heavy-duty traveler. I went to Ecuador, and they brought a band from the Pacific Coast there. Mm -hmm. And I saw these people coming. They dress exactly how people dressed up in my village back then. <laughs> the orchestration, the balafon, they had balafon orchestration. Mm -hmm. And the, the leader, his name was Papa Hongkong. Maybe you could check him out. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. I was there watching the dresses, the dances, the music sounded the same like when I was a kid. So somebody tells me here, there's something that people never change. That's the way they cooked and the way they played music. Absolutely. And what I've noticed with the rhythms is that the only difference is we give them different names. And so when the Cubans are playing something and they call it a guajira, mm -hmm. um, I've had the pleasure of listening to a, a fellow Cameroonian uh, bassist, Patrick Andy. And mm -hmm. I've listened to some of his tempos and I'm going, that sounds like a Venezuelan joropo or this, and, and mm. I don't know what to call it, but I recognize it. I go, okay, I, I, I get this tempo, you know. The beat is the same, like I said, especially when it comes to rhythm. That rhythm was so hip. Yes. It's just hard. You can't just change it. You can, you can't change it. You, you make it kind of, you shape it different shape, but you always, the essence of it, mm -hmm. always. It's like trying to take a cla the clave. Yeah. It's untouchable. Mm -hmm. And this, this recording you did with group Mandecan Cubano, and as I was listening, I heard bits of Spanish, but you sing predominantly in, in what language? In Duala. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I recognized the tunes, especially there was one, Bilongo, and, and some of the tunes that I recognized as La Negra Tomasa, and I'm going, okay, I... I know this song, but I'm not. I don't, I don't know the lyrics. I don't know the lyrics. Yeah, so. yeah I, I wanted to, you know, if I'm gonna do, you know, and, and also everything is related to story because, you know, first time I went to Cuba, uh, uh, I happened to jam that night with uh, with local musicians there, and they started to play La Negro Tomasa, and so that's that's related to, so you know, yes, to the whole thing. How that was my welcoming song to the island too. So that's why I definitely wanted to put that song in the record if. If I made a Cuban record, Afro-Cuban record. Oh, absolutely. And and as I was seeing, part of the music, and and especially in, in Puerto Rico, the history, the news, because people didn't read back then. And this was the way that the storytelling and the news was brought to the people. And so the Puerto Ricans have, have a beat they call plena, and it would have the story and these... Each of the stories is like Elena got cut at a party and they got in a fight and she got cut. And this news could be spread throughout the island. Or mm. a, a shark ate an American tourist and this was musical news. And they would share it and everybody knows these, these songs and they still sing them even though the news is very old. And I'm sure they don't know who the American was that got eaten by a, a, a shark. A shark. But it's part of the storytelling that goes along with yep. the music, you know, and it is, it is so universal. It's amazing. So with this release, I know the hard copy is starting to go out next month, September 16th, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But it's already available digitally. Digital, yeah, it's available in the state. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. And your bass, I saw, I saw, I know gear people always want to know a little bit about your instruments. T tell us a little about you know, what you're playing, Richard. I'm playing uh, Fodera, mm -hmm. and uh, made in Brooklyn, for those who don't know about Fodera, uh, uh, by Vinnie and Joey. Vinnie. 
and enjoy. Yeah. That's right, man. I'm grooving, baby. Represent. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I've been playing for there for well over close to 20 years now. Nice. We use the same bass, you know. Uh, just, just love it, you know. I saw this bass first day, you know. I was, I was in the studio. Uh, back then, I was a Fender guy playing four strings, you know. And uh, I was in this, in a session with, uh, uh, wow, what was his name? Frank McComb and Brentford Masters was a producer, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a A and R back then at Columbia. So we, had, we had the studio then. Uh, most of the bass line that he wanted was kind of low, you know. I wasn't really a fan of five strings, so uh, I was trying to lower my my fourth string, kept lowering my fourth string, but, you know, the lows were not really holding, you know, the fourth really tight, you know. So I decided two days after that, I said, listen, guys, I'm going to just get five strings and finish this session with the real five strings. And I walked in the store, I went to... I went to uh, Guitar Center on 48th Street where we used to have all this, this uh, back in, in, in New York, we used to have all these uh, uh, guitar shops and stuff and keyboards and percussion. And I saw this guitar right at the window. And the guitar just kind of spoke to me. You know, one of those, you know, I'm like, hey, where is five strings? <laughs> I never even heard of Fudero before, you know, I just went in. I said, can I try this bass? play one note of it. And the guy told me, it's really expensive. I said, okay, I'll get it anyway. I didn't even discuss the price. I just got it. I didn't give this guy an opportunity to check all the five string space. I just played one, two notes, and it has, this is the bass. And I got a bass in the studio, and uh, from there, you know, and of course, from there, they got in touch with me, so I'm an under now. Nice. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's going well. Just, I just love the bass, yeah. I got you. And with with studio recording, I don't know if you use, because I know usually you play on Mark bass amplification. But yeah, I, MPM, I, amplify. I have a preamp uh, that I use in the studio, Mark bass preamp that nice. I use. Yeah. Nice. And uh, on stage, I, I use a little Mark, mm -hmm. a thousand watt that I use mostly on stage, too. And... Uh, and uh, I have my own uh, uh, Ninja made by uh, Mark Bass 2 now, which is out. It's been a few months. It's doing great. Sounds fantastic and uh, really tight. Sound beautiful. And uh, a 212 speaker that I use also uh, by Mark Bass also. Uh, also a Ninja, Ninja Siri. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a new combo that just came out. A ninja, a small ninja combo with a 210, uh, 210 speaker and a tweeter. Beautiful for clubs and stuff and, uh, and uh, pretty light to carry around for. Oh, yeah. So we're moving around, you know, we're moving ahead and we got some other project, you know, in the near future. Very nice. I will make sure because we'll, we always stop by Mark Bass booth at the NAMM show in Anaheim. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm always excited to see what new things they had. This last show, they were talking a lot about Alain Caron's combo. Yeah, and, that's another one too. And so uh, I'll, I'll make Jeff sure. Berlin, Jeff Berlin got a combo too. Jeff Berlin yes. came out with a combo. I tried the Jeff Berlin one. It's good too. Alain came out and tried uh, uh, the Alain one. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, it sounds fantastic too. I will yeah. have to look forward to finding the Richard Bona combo when I'm there. <laughs> They all sound fantastic. And maybe I see you at the NAMM show, too. Are Our, you going to this year? Oh, I will be there, my friend. I'm next year. Okay, cool. So we'll, have, we'll definitely have to connect. Well, Richard, yes. I know you're so and, busy. And if you're in town. Yes. Uh, you know, I own a club now. In Paris? No, in New York. Oh, in New York. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Oh, I own a club. You could, you could, you could, you could, uh, you could Google. It's, it's, you could Google it. It's called Club Bonafide. Ah, oh, there you go. Check it out, and we're celebrating the first anniversary of the club, the first year of the club on uh, September 9th and September 10th, and I'm playing there with the Mandecan Cubano. Oh, very nice. 
If you're in town that you feel like you want to shake a little bit, you want to shake that tree, stop by. Interestingly enough, we're I, I we won't be in New York at that date, oh. but I appreciate the invitation. And next time, to any time you're in New York, please let me know. Stop by, even if I'm not there. Sure, you get a beautiful reception there by the manager. We'll take care. Oh, of. thank you, thank you. And yeah. what I will do is because this will get this loaded up. So for our readers, you've heard the date. What's going on in New York? People, go go see this. I mean, you know, this yes. is. This is an event. This is the kind of thing. And, and not only that, but get Heritage. Get the CD, whether you do it right now on digitally or you wait. Because so many people are going, oh, CDs, they're going out of style. I still like to hear a, a real CD. I'm not going out of style, baby. We're still here. We're hanging in there. There you go. Well, thank you for your time, Richard. This has been great. I appreciate it. Um, I am, again, thrilled and honored to speak with a musician that is at a world level. I wish that our leaders could listen to the musicians and find peace for all of us that you realize that we can get, to, we live together on this planet instead of fighting over all the little things. And for what? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? we, musicians are higher evolved people. I've been saying this, you know. We, That's true. Love, baby. Absolutely. Well, thank you Always. again. You've, you've seen thank this. Thank you very much. You're very welcome you to see care. this. Okay. Yes, love you, you man. This interview, BassMusicianMagazine.com. Yay.